When I finished the Order 1886, I honestly didn't want it to end. I was enjoying it that much. The setting, storyline, acting, and visuals were all top notch. The gameplay, on hard difficulty at least, was perfectly up to par with what's expected of a third person shooter. The AI wasn't too careless, which is to say they do expose themselves from behind cover, which is pretty much par for the course in a cover based third person shooter. But in my experience, the enemies rarely just stand around in the open and wait for you to fill them with lead. There were sequences where I died a number of times in a row, but even on hard, the game wasn't too difficult or too easy. It felt like the proper difficulty for an experienced gamer. The most dangerous enemy in the game is the shotgunner, due to a tendency to relentlessly bum rush the player. Trust me, they will tear you up if you don't get the jump on them. Shotgun specialist! I would be remiss if I didn't mention the fact that there are plenty of sections in the game that present quick time events and button prompts to the player. The former is used primarily during battle sequences and the latter for interaction with objects in the world. Yes, they both occur pretty often. When it comes to QTEs, you either hate them or tolerate them. The QTEs in this game didn't bother me. One or two of the unique weapons, such as the Thermite Rifle, were pretty awesome and I wish I had more of an opportunity to use them. You are at the mercy of the game when it comes to keeping certain weapons from chapter to chapter, or sometimes even section to section, so you will only find some of the better weapons once in a blue. In the early goings of the game, you are supplied with a couple of gadgets to help you along the way. One is a lockpick and one is a device that overloads power boards to unlock doors. Both of them trigger a minigame and in the end they basically serve the same purpose, to get you through a door. The odd part is that they are really only used to continue on the main path and therefore there is no tension or worry that you'll screw things up. If you mess up, you just keep trying until you get it right. In other games like the Fallout series, Assassin's Creed, etc., you would either have to unlock gadgets like this by using XP you've earned, or at least continually level them up in order to get through tougher doors to reach secret areas. The fact that you are given the items freely, you can't really use them to explore a secret area, and you can't run out of lockpicks or power makes the gadgets or at least the minigame kind of pointless. You could have just as easily hit triangle and have the door open. It is more interactive this way, but I feel like they could have fleshed it out a bit more. My main gripe with the game is the large amount of areas in which you were forced to walk. It's the good old hand to ear piece walk that Gears of War made famous, but without the earpiece. This dude just prefers to chill when going places. The cynic in me wonders if they did that to purposely pad the game. It took me about 8-10 to 10 hours to complete the game on hard difficulty while exploring every corner. This total includes gameplay and cutscenes. Although The Order 1886 didn't blow me away, it is still a good, enjoyable game. I'm looking forward to a sequel. The final score, 7 out of 10.